So I was working on a project where I had an animation like a TV screen and I wanted to put that on a model. So in this case, it's like a ski helmet and this is like the left turn animation of it. So I animated it in After Effects, broke out all the frames and then put it on a model in Keyshot. And so I thought it'd be cool to just show you the process of how all that works. So, and like with all the stuff that I'm doing, you can do it however you want. You really could just draw these frames by hand if you wanted, but I'll be using After Effects. So to start, actually what you'll want to do is like all that this model is, is just this little curvy thing. So it's just one thing to place the material onto. So you can kind of see like how exactly that would uh, fit here on the screen. Um, but what you would want to do is UV it so you would flatten that model and then design your graphic over it. So you can kind of see how the, the how this flattened version is this 3D model if you're unfamiliar with how UVs work. So you'll UV it and then in After Effects, in my case, uh, I have this animation going and actually I can show you what it looks like with the UVs overlaid on top of it. So it's a little small. I'll just scale it up roughly just to kind of show you how kind of it would work generally. Um, so I'll bring the opacity down on that. And then if I were to play my little animation that I already made, you'll see how like it's looping and then it, how it would roughly place on the model. So I'll pause that. Um, and regarding the loop, it's actually like a 10 second, just perfect loop. So it just kind of infinitely plays. And whereas, this one is like the left turn animation. This is the stop animation. So like same idea, just kind of a different thing. So anyway, uh, you'll just take your animation and I'm not going to show you how to use After Effects and actually animate just how to bring what you made into Keyshot. So I will go to comp and then actually in comp settings, I'll just show you the resolution doesn't matter. It can be whatever you want. It just has to be a square ideally and the resolution or the frame rate probably best to keep it at 30. Uh, it's just easy to keep it consistent because like if this is 30 frames a second then key shot is looking for 20 or whatever it can just jumble things up so it's good to keep it there um, but i will only be exporting these 10 frames so i will go to comp and add to render queue so now i'll just change the type from lossless avi to png sequence Okay, and then I'll change the location for that. So this folder is actually fine. Um, and then regarding the file name, so this is the number of it. So it'll be like 001, 002, and so on. Um, you'll, you'll probably just want to leave that alone. And then you can change this as much as you want, though. But I will click Save and Render, and that should only take a second. And so that is good. And I'll actually show you what that exported. So... If I go into my frames folder, I uh, just exported all the frames. So I can play them all and kind of show you how they would animate. And then in Keyshot, I'll just set it so that it loops infinitely. But like in your case, you know, it could be this 10 minute long thing, whatever you want to do. Um, but in my case this is what I will be doing. So I'll now hop into Keyshot and I have my scene already set up and actually let me unpause it. Uh, it's it's kind of complicated, but really all you have to focus on in my case is this uh, model right here, the same exact one I showed you earlier. So actually, if I were to go to solo mode and go into a different camera, I can show you like, there it is, it's the same thing. All, all that I'll be doing is just placing the material on that and then it just kind of emits the graphic. So I'll go back into my other camera and exit solo mode and so just to start doing that all i will do is right click that model material and edit material graph and that should open this guy and you you really don't have to have any special material set all you got to do is for this first node change it from whatever you have to emissive and then in the emissive channel we're going to plug in the graphic for the color so i will right click Go to textures and video map. So double click that and in the folders, I'll find my frame. So I already have the folder open, so I will copy that and paste the location. So there's all my frames, open that. And so now I just plug this guy into the color 
And you can see it did change it, but the graphics not there. And the reason for that is it's using a planar projection. So we want to switch from planar to UV and voila, there is our graphic. So now I can move that and like really everything's pretty much done right now. All we have to do is open our animation timeline. So I'll go to window animation and there's actually, if, if you're not familiar with the animation part, there's actually two tabs that open it. Sometimes you won't notice it, but like when you edit some animation node, you'll use, oh, just lost it. You'll use this tab to do it. Like all the properties will show up here. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's two of them, but yeah, so there is this right here is our little animation. And if I play it right now, it'll probably be a little choppy just cause yeah, it's like rendering real time and I'm recording the video, but you can kind of see how it's animating and then it's just playing on a loop and you could just copy. Let me pause this actually. You could just copy this guy and like have it repeat for however many seconds or whatever you wanted to do. But yeah, so then you could just go to render and then in animation set all the settings you want to do. And then when you save that out, you will end up with something like this.